good evening, everyone, and welcome to this edition of Race Face Spotlight. Today, we're going to be going just about as far as we can go on the map. We're going to be going from Newport Ritchie, Florida, all the way up to the northwest to Snohomish, Washington, where we find 15-year-old Haley Constance. Haley, how are you doing this evening? I'm doing really good. I'm glad to be back racing, and it's just been really exciting since I've been racing three cars this year. So it's been really exciting. So let's talk about before the racing actually started. How were you handling the band on racing and not being able to go out and race? It was definitely really hard for me, especially because racing is like my number one hobby. And I've always raced my whole entire life. And not being able to like start racing this season was really hard, especially with the virtual school. I had really nothing to look forward to, so it was really stressful, and it was just kind of really upsetting not being able to race. Now, when she says she's serious about racing, I'm going to tell a little story on her. Right before we came on the air, I asked her about her new boyfriend, and she said, my race car is my boyfriend. <laughs> right answer. So that will tell everybody watching, this girl is serious about racing. But let's go back and let's talk about virtual school a little bit. That had to be a different, I mean, I think every driver that I've talked to all year has had different feelings on virtual school. So what's your thoughts on virtual school? I really, I don't really like it that much because I like to be in person learning and being able to be like with a teacher and having them be able to teach me. And I'm definitely a textbook person. I don't like being on the computer and like having to learn that way. But the only thing I really did like about it was that I was able to be at home and I had more time to work on the race cars to get them set up for the weekend. Okay, so you're not a big fan of virtual school, rather be at school in person, but tell me what your favorite virtual class was. My favorite virtual class was probably um, Kitchen Academy because we got to cook food. So, <laughs> That was my favorite because it was a lot of fun to do and we got to interact with all of our classmates a lot. So that was definitely my favorite class. So how did you do that? You have like a little webcam in the kitchen or something that was watching you cook? No, we just had to take pictures of our food after we cooked it and in the process of making it. And then we created some of our own recipes that we had to share with the class. So that was about how we did it. So let me ask you, are you a good cook? Um, I think I'm a pretty good cook. I Sometimes I think I'm a little bit better than my mom, to be honest with you. So I guess you could say I'm a good cook. Okay, there <laughs> you go. She threw the gauntlet down, Tiffany. So let me ask you, you know, if I would have been up there, I would have been a good person to be, you know, to like test everything that you were making, because I like to eat, if you can't tell. <laughs> okay, so we know what your favorite class was. What was your least favorite online class? Definitely math because um, I'm a year ahead in math, so it's already pretty hard for me to do. And it was just really unorganized. I don't really know how the teacher like set it up because it was kind of her first time using Canvas, which is what we went off of. And it was hard to find the assignments and be able to turn them in. So math was definitely the most difficult for me. But um, towards the end of the year, I started getting it, and it started getting a lot better. Right, because if you're going to be a, a race car driver, you're going to have to be good at math because there's a lot of math involved in getting cars set up and tire staggers and all of that kind of stuff. So hang in there on the math side of it. So let's talk about some racing now. Um, as you said, you race three different cars. That's very unusual. You race a junior late model. You race a junior Hornet and you also race a 600 micro sprint. So out of the three, which is your most favorite to drive? Um, I just, I like driving anything. Anything that I can drive, I like. But right now, I think my favorite is the micro sprint because it's on dirt. I've always raced dirt and it's always been my favorite. But lately I've been really enjoying the junior late model because it's just something new to drive and it's been a lot of fun. Well, that surprises me that you're, you like the micro sprint, you like to race on dirt. So what is it about the dirt racing that, that you like so much about? It really gets my adrenaline pumping, you know, because it's just, it feels a lot faster 
than when you're on asphalt. It's just there's more movement. You have there's so many different grooves and every other lap you're in a different groove or you're passing somebody every other lap. And it just seems like it's a lot more chaotic, I guess you could say. And so you're always moving and your eyes and your mind is just always thinking where on asphalt for me in the late model, it just feels like a lot more consistent and smoother than it would be on dirt. So what things are you learning in the micro sprint that you think you'll be able to carry over to uh, the late model? Um, there's definitely been a couple times where I've gotten loose in the late model and I've been able to save it. And I think that's because of my dirt experience. So that's been really helpful. Absolutely. I, I think that's what everybody carries from the dirt over to uh, the pavement racing is that ability to be able to hold on to a loose race car and you kind of get, you see the guys kind of get sideways. You see the Christopher Bells, the Ricky Stenhouses, when they get kind of loose and they get it sideways and get it all cocked up, those guys that have the dirt experience are able to save those cars. So that's really cool. But let's talk about that you had a win at Wenatchee uh, Valley Super Oval in July um, in your junior late model. So how exciting was that to park that thing in Victory Lane? That was really exciting. It was a lot of fun to race, and uh, we started third, I believe, and we got a really good start in the beginning because the person in front of me spun out. So we just got the lead very early on and led most of the race. And my heart was definitely pumping because I had a car right behind me the whole time, right on my bumper, and towards the end we started pulling away. But it was just, it was crazy. It was nice to get my first win at Wenatchee because that was the first junior late model race at Wenatchee. So that was really exciting. So when is your next junior late model race? It's actually this weekend at Wenatchee again. So that should be fun. Back to back? Uh, yep. And we have a micro sprint race on Friday too. So we're racing the micro sprint at Deming on Friday on the dirt. And then on the next day, we have to head up to Wenatchee to race the junior late model. <laughs> All right. She called it. She's going back to back in the junior late model back to Victory Lane. So I know also in July, you picked up a win in the Youth Hornet. Um, tell us a little bit about, because a lot of people may not know what a Youth Hornet is. Can you tell the viewers a little bit about a Youth Hornet and how it's a little bit different than the late model? So it's an Acura Integra and it's front wheel drive. And so we drive on a fifth mile track, which is pretty small. You wouldn't be able to drive a late model on that small of a track. And it's just, it's a lot smaller and a lot more less power than a late model would be. And is it a little bit more aggressive racing? Is there a lot of bumping and banging in that Youth Hornet or does everybody race pretty clean? Oh yeah, there's a lot of bumping and banging. Uh, a lot of the kids are newer to racing. Um, sometimes it's their first time even being in a car. So it's a lot more rough and the cars aren't as pretty as a late model would be and a lot less expensive. So the kids aren't really as afraid to uh, bump and bang a little bit. And one thing about the Junior Hornet that I don't really like is that it's full invert. So if you qualify first, then you're going to have to start all the way in the back of the pack in the main. So sometimes I'll be starting like 15th in the main, have to work all my way all the way back up, which I guess I kind of like it a little bit because it's a lot more racing and a lot more passing. So it makes it a lot of fun. Well, the good news about all this invert stuff, when you make it to the top in racing, it's like you qualify, you start where you qualified at. So all the invert, roll the dice, pick the number, all of that kind of stuff goes out the window. But it does, you know, help you now uh, because it does, it's more entertaining for the fans. That's what all the race promoters say. That's why we do the invert. And uh, if you're coming from the back and coming all the way to the front, then if you were in the front, you'd basically just run off and leave everybody else. So not so much um, sure how you, much you would learn doing that. So um, what does the rest of your schedule look like um, as far as making up some of the races that uh, were affected by uh, COVID earlier in the season? Um, a lot of our seasons aren't really going for any longer. They've kind of just ended it where it would usually end because up here in Washington, it gets a lot more rainy uh, in these months to come. So we have to start ending our races pretty soon. So hopefully next year, we could just start the seasons a little earlier and get more racing in. Okay. Now, let me ask you something. When the wintertime hits, 
Are you going to do any simulator racing this year? Yeah, we're definitely going to try to be using the simulator a little bit more. And we might be racing goat karts at an indoor arena up here in Monroe. So that's going to be fun, too. Yeah, you did the indoor goat karts last year as well, right? Yeah, we did those last year, too. Okay. So if you had a crystal ball sitting in front of you right now, where do you see Haley Constance in the next five years? In the next five years, hopefully I'm going to be racing a super late model and be traveling a lot more because we've kind of just stayed in Washington area and been just driving a lot closer to home. And I definitely want to start traveling a little bit more and racing everywhere so I can get more experience on different tracks. Yeah, super late model racing is tough. I mean, there was a big super late model race last night in Wisconsin. And, you know, you had somebody like Bubba Pollard, who's probably the king of super late models. He didn't even make it out of the, the last chance qualifier. He had to take a provisional. So that's really tough racing. And I think you'll do really well at that. So I know that you guys are getting ready to move into your new shop. What has it been like getting this all put together and are you excited about the move in? I'm really excited because right now we're working out of our small little garage and we have a lot of cars. We have, well, I'm racing three cars and my whole family races except my mom. So we have, I believe, six cars in the garage right now. And so once we move in there, it's definitely going to be a lot less cluttered and it's going to be easier for the whole family to get in the garage and start racing. And the shop has definitely taken a long time. I think it's been a year because we've been trying to build it ourselves, so it's been less money. And it's just, I'm super excited to finally move in it. So here's what we're going to do. Haley's going to take us on a little tour through the shop. Watch this video. Guys, so I'm just going to take you through a walkthrough oh of the shop gosh, real quick. We just finished painting yesterday, and that's that gray color on there that we chose in the white trim. This is what it looks like on the inside. So this week, hopefully we're gonna be getting the lift put in right over there in that area. And that's also where the late models are gonna go, mine and my dad's. And then over here is gonna be the micro sprints. And then this week, we're also getting the fridge and countertops put in over here, along with plumbing for the bathroom. Over here is supposed to be for a motorhome, but we don't have a motorhome, so we're just going to use this area for fabricating and manufacturing and welding. And yeah, that's what it looks like. I'm super excited to move all of our cars in here and finally be able to get this shop done. All right, Haley, that is awesome. You guys have done a great job working on the shop. I know your dad, your mom, I think everybody in your family has put a lot of time in that. Very, very cool. So I got a question. What does Haley do when you're not racing? Right now, since it's been really hot out, I've been swimming a lot in the pool, which has actually helped a lot with uh, my arm strength because just swimming around the pool has been helpful. And I also, we jump on the trampoline a lot. So I've been trying to learn new tricks and everything since quarantine started. And I've actually been able to get um, my backflip and everything. And another thing we've been doing is paddle boarding so that has really helped with my arm strength with the late model and everything. So let me ask you something. You get this backflip down, are you going to do like Carl Edwards used to do, do a backflip if you win a race? Um, <laughs> I don't know about that one. I've been kind of prone to breaking bones, so I don't know how that would uh, pan out. So. <laughs> Never mind. No backflipping. I can yeah, see let's not do that. my phone ringing now with your parents going, you... You talked her into doing a backflip. She broke her arm. I don't want to be responsible for that. So I know you've got something new going on that's actually pretty cool. It's called a social media pit crew. And that's where you've asked fans if they want to be a part of your racing to help you share your social media posts. So basically to, to like it, comment on it, and share on it. How's that going? And are you looking for any more pit crew members? Um, I'm looking for... A couple more pit crew members that'd be nice because they've really helped me a lot with my views and everything and being able to make sure more people get to see my post 
and a huge thanks to everybody on my pit crew because they've been really helpful in sharing and commenting and liking all my posts so that more people can be able to see what I'm doing and where I'm going to be racing next. Awesome. So there you go. A personal invitation from the driver herself that says if you want to be on her pit crew, reach out to her. So go to her social media page, send her a message. Come on. We had a lot of fun doing this. So we're just about out of time. Haley, do you want to give a shout out to your sponsors? Yeah, huge thanks to MyTrafficMan.net, um, DM Inc. for my incredible graphics on all of my cars and for my suit designs, um, my whole family, all of my supporters, Joe's Racing Products, Joe's Speed Shop, um, PFC Brakes, and that's it. All right. Well, Haley, thank you so much for being with us. If you want to find out more about Haley, go to HaleyConstanceRacing.com. Check out her fan zone. Get signed up and subscribe to her newsletter. And you guys can also follow her there on all of her social media platforms. So again, Haley, thanks for being with us. We'll be back talking to you in a couple of months again. So go out. Let's go back to back this weekend. And everybody, my name is Rod Wortham. Thank you for watching Race Face Spotlight. We'll see you back here in two weeks.